religious doctrine on one or two or three few little points of scripture. But here's something else that's beautiful about the church. We emphasize in the church covenant, rightly divided. The word of God must be rightly divided. That means we don't just take one scripture and, and run with it, so to speak. We don't base our entire belief and, and service to God on one verse in the Bible. Because when we do that, we're not rightly dividing the scriptures. But it takes bringing it all together. And only the, only the Spirit of God can help us bring it all together. And so if we're sincere in our seat, in our circuit, circuit, <laughs> seat, 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 <laughs> If we're sincere in our seeking of the Lord, <laughs> and we want to know his word, he'll reveal it to us. He will reveal it to us by his spirit. Because he wants us to, he wants to see us in heaven someday. He doesn't want any of us to be lost. And he wants us to stay, to stay on the path that he has already set. He's already laid the path. All we have to do is just put our feet in it and walk and stay there. Yes. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Let God guide us and lead us in everything that we do, everything that we say, and, and allow the vision of the church to become more precious to us every day. Because as I said earlier, this is a message that, that the world needs to hear. Yes, sir. Um, I, just, I, didn't, I didn't know if you were going to bring it out, but it's something that, that I was just thinking of. We're talking about the difference between the kingdom and the church. Uh, I heard it once, but I really appreciate the way it was put. As a matter of fact, it might have been our pastor who, who brought it out. The new birth that so many people think brings us into the church. The new birth is a separation. It's a coming out. Birth is a coming out. Uh, marriage, on the other hand, is a coming together, a joining together, a coming under a covenant. So these two things are very different. Uh, they are very separate when, when you look at them, not only in life but in the word of God they, they, they have those distinct uh, characteristics in all things for a reason and it's so that we can see clearly that there is a difference between the new birth and the covenant there's a difference between a birth and a marriage uh, when Wendy and I got, got married we weren't born into that marriage now there may be some cultures where that's so <laughs> But even still, it's a coming together. It's a joining together. It's not a coming out. They, the children of Israel came out of Egypt just as we, when we came to the Lord and recognized our need for a Savior, we came out of sin. And so when we come into the church, we come under that covenant. We come together. We join together. And also, uh, one of the other distinguishing characteristics of the kingdom is it's not visible. Uh, yes. Luke 17, 20 and 21 when Jesus, speaking of Jesus, when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come he answered and said answered them and said the kingdom of God cometh not with observation neither shall they say lo here or lo there for behold the kingdom of God is within you you cannot see the kingdom of God salvation experience is not Something that you can walk down the street and say, saved, not saved, saved, not saved. It's something that happens within a heart of an individual. Now, there are certain characteristics that are obviously not Christian. But that doesn't mean that everybody who has those characteristics are saved. Because some people are more moral than others. <laughs> there are some people who will appear. I, I know one of the... One of the Things I've heard people say. I saw. I saw this woman. This minister. Said, I saw this woman, and she looked. Oh goodness, she looked. She had her hair just right. She had this long dress on. This must be a church god woman. I've got to find out what local congregation she's a part of. And as he was walking over to this elderly lady, she pulled out a cigarette and lit. Well, it was very obvious to him all of a sudden that even though she had the hair right, she didn't want to wear no makeup. She had a long dress. She was not a member of the church of God. It's not. The kingdom of God cometh not by observation. Thank you so much for bringing those out. Yes, that's exactly what we're talking about tonight. Being able to make those distinctions. Because there is a difference. There is a difference. And one of the last things I'd like to mention is continuity. And I've made mention of it frequently throughout our study tonight.
but the church can be traced all the way back, really, to the mind of God. Of course, we don't have any point of reference for that because God is eternal and he's omniscient and his ways and knowledge and thoughts are much higher than ours. But the idea of a church was in the mind of God long before, well, the Bible says before the foundation of the world. But we have, we have things in the Bible that we can, we can use as points of reference. For example, as I mentioned earlier about Israel. We are the continuation of the church in the wilderness, as it's referred to in Acts chapter 7, verse 38, in Sinai. We are the continuation of the early church from the book of Acts, where the apostles were going about with the, full of the power of God. The church did not start on the day of Pentecost. There again, that's another very common misconception. But it was very much alive even before the day of Pentecost. Because when Jesus Christ stepped foot on the mountain and he ordained his apostles and sent them forth, he established his church in that moment in time. So we are the continuation of the church that Jesus Christ built. According, Ephesians 1, 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. For what purpose? That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. What a beautiful scripture. And of course, because it says that he has chosen us, that does not imply predestination. That, does, that is not what that means. That just means that if we accept his covenant and his word, it is because he has chosen us. We didn't choose ourselves. We couldn't have. There's no way. But God chose a people for him from before the foundation of the world that his people should be holy and without blame before him in love. So I just want to encourage us tonight. Okay, I pray that. I'd like to say about what yes. makes us different. Mm -hmm. You know, you can talk about what makes, uh, makes us different. Uh, there's three things you can get in trouble over. Uh, one of them is jewelry. You know, we teach the outward adornment. And uh, there, there's a, I can't find another organization that teaches like we do about, about jewelry. And the other is divorce and remarriage. And the other is the one fold. You can get <coughs> uh, all these areas, you, 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 you can get in trouble. If you, if you, I've got more trouble over it talking to people about divorce and remarriage, and uh, you get to the one fold, or, or you get to jewelry, all three of these, you, you know, you can, uh, that makes us different from all the other, I've never found a better church, I can't find a church on, on television or radio or, or just going about that teaches uh, like we do. And that, that's what makes us different. And that we've held on to it uh, right, right, right on up till today. And, and we, we are exclusive, you know, a different. But when you get to talk to people about the one fold or about divorce and remarriage or about jewelry, you, you can get in trouble. But uh, we have to make a stand, you know, for that. The churches, that's why we're uh, not as large as these other churches, that we can take. Divorce, remarriage, or jewelry, stuff like that. Uh, Sister, Sister R wrote a book about jewelry. That's a great one. Uh, we I got it at the house, you know, about, about jewelry and stuff. And, uh, I'm just glad we, we hold well to these, uh, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. And, and you know what? One of those, one thing that all three of the points that you mentioned have in common, they're from the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. This, this isn't that we are the church of God, you know, yes, those are definitely distinguishing points, but we are not the church because we don't wear jewelry or because we don't divorce and remarry or have members in our ranks that are divorced and remarried. The reason that we are the church is because God ordained a body from before the foundations of the world that would walk in all the light of his word. And so the doctrines that the church is faithful to, it's because they are in the word of God. And, and I've heard it said, and I really appreciate this, you know, whenever we talk to people um, about the church, 
it's important to avoid saying, well, the church teaches or my church teaches or, you know, instead the word of God teaches. The Bible says, the Lord says in this particular scripture, that particular scripture, because again, when we can, when we can share and teach from the Bible and show in the word of God. Well, I don't know what it does for you, but I know for me, it, it clicks. If I can see it in the Bible, then I know that I'm not just listening to your opinion. <laughs> I'm listening to the word of God because as we established earlier, everything that's in this word has been breathed from the mouth of God and inspired by his spirit. So everything in here is truth. And the Bible tells us that the word of God will never pass away. It's settled forever in heaven. So whenever we share, we should be encouraged to make sure, make absolutely sure that we have good, we have good, solid scripture to go along with everything that's coming out of our mouths so that we can encourage whoever we're talking to to look it up for themselves, to study it, to pray about it, to really get a hold of the spirit of God so that he can reveal the truth to them. Because without that revelation, they're just hearing even, even though it's the word of God, they're still just hearing the word of God. But it takes the spirit of God to work in the heart of an individual so that they can receive and understand what the Bible says. And that gets started by you and by me making sure that we know the word and that we are teaching the word and living the word. Yeah. Yes. yes. There's, there's an article. Uh, I think it's a uh, Brother Pruitt. He wrote an article about uh, declaring the whole counsel of God. Not, not yes. part of it, but there's so many people they don't uh, they won't be, they're afraid of persecution uh, because you know the whole counsel you know, sometimes it goes against the grain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people yes. ask the question, well how do you stand uh, how do you stand on divorce and remarriage? You, you have to come up with, you have to tell them you know, that being the case. And, uh, but uh, sometimes, sometimes there's persecution, especially uh, the one fold and the uh, divorce and remarriage, the jewelry. But uh, sometimes if people ask you about it, you have to, you have to, you know, be able to tell them. But, but he, he, he wrote an article about, I think it was Paul, he declared up the, the whole council, regardless of what it costs. So there's going to come a time that we're going to have to pay for what we, we uh, know uh, but we're going to have to we have to stand for the truth it might, it might cost us in the future it might cost us some, quite a bit but right now it's not, we, we have daylight you know, we can go uh, tell people but uh, we'll, what, it won't be long before we'll have to, but it's going to pay to stand of course they have the they had to forfeit their lives, you know, Paul and all the apostles. And, uh, that's what makes you know that it's real because all 12 uh, forfeited their lives. And anybody's not going to forfeit their life for something that's not real. And uh, that's where we can know that the, the foundation uh, that they pay, pay for it by their life. The, the foundation that God standeth sure, the Bible says, that the Lord knoweth them that are his. Amen. Uh, something you said uh, brought uh, this this thought to me. Uh, we can't say we know we have the truth because we have the plan. Okay, we have the flag because we have the truth. Amen. Yes. It's to be this way because uh, of the truth. Yes. And there are people who have got that backwards uh, in in our history. Uh, if you can have a piece of cloth, but if you don't have the truth, yes. it doesn't stand for the truth. It's, it's lost its value. And in this day and time, there are there are many. So it goes back to the word. Yes. There are many people, many many people now, a couple of groups that have the same flag, but they're not part of the church. And and it is. I've had conversations with individuals who have seen the flag flying in maybe one of those groups. And, and then as, as they get into it, they realize something's not right. And they find out by what's being preached and what's being taught that, 
this is really, that that particular group really isn't the church. So yes, it is because of the truth. That is the reason why. That is the reason why. Well, I thank you so much for your input. That's all I have tonight. I just pray that this has at least stirred our hearts sure. and our minds yeah. and reminded us of why the church is so beautiful to us. Because what we're a part of is not just another group, religious group. This is a beautiful institution that Jesus Christ established, that God thought of before, from before the foundations of the world. <clears throat> and his truth marches on. I'm going to read you um, in closing words to a song. 